Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Katherine Hopkins. I hope you guys are all well tonight. Uh, I'm the director at UCD High School, and it feels really crazy to be able to speak to you guys, our whole community, in this way. But that said, these times demand a, a new kind of performance. Um, so start, starting back in late February, we began uh, our journey toward the production of Twelfth Night and our last in-person rehearsal was March 13th. And on March 27th, we began to try to figure out how to perform one of Shakespeare's best loved comedies on Zoom. So these amazing actors really rallied and persevered and they battled a lot of complicated feelings. And uh, I wanna say that their work is really exceptional. So I'm so, so proud of these amazing actors. And yes, we are live, which means mistakes can happen. So I hope you'll bear with us if you see any glitches in the matrix. Uh, I have a couple of um, things to work with you guys on in terms of procedures. Uh, please make sure that you are muted and that you have stopped your video for the entire performance. At the end of the show, I'm gonna let you know when you can turn on your sound and video to show your appreciation of the actors. Again, please make sure you're always muted and the video is off. You can find those buttons in the bottom left corner of your screen. And also, please refrain from using the chat function during the show. Um, so this show is best viewed in gallery view. And if you're on a computer, and if you look in the top right corner of the screen, you should see a box in, uh, sorry, you should see a box with many little squares. You're gonna click on that, and then that'll put you in gallery view. If you see speaker view in the corner, that means you're already in gallery view and you should be good to go. So there's a chance you might get bumped from all the gallery view during some screen sharing during the show. So if you notice your view is different, just click back to gallery view and you should be okay. So now if you see my video and many other squares of people's names over them, you need to hide non-video participants. And what you gotta do is you gotta hover your mouse over the top right corner of one of those boxes and you should see a square with three dots. So you're gonna click on that, and then you um, select hide non-video participants. If you try to go to settings, um, if you're not on a regular computer, uh, see if you can find your option there. I have a couple of students who are ready to jump in if you need some help. Um, so we're gonna see if anyone has any questions. Anyone has any questions about uh, how to mute themselves or turn off video or any other question you have? You can use the chat function or you can just unmute yourself and um, ask me. Okay. All right, so I, I think everyone's good to go. I'm gonna lock the meeting at seven, uh, about one minute. So we're gonna go back to our screen share for one second. I'm gonna lock the meeting so no one will disturb this incredible production. So without further ado, uh, we're about to begin 12th night, 2020.
<coughs> what country, friends, is this? This is Illyria, lady. And what should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned. Is what think you, sailors? It is for a chance that you yourself were saved. Oh, my poor brother. And so perchance may he be. True, madam. And to comfort you a chance, when our ship did split, when you and those poor numbers saved with you, hung on our driving boat, I saw your brother. I saw him hold the queens with the waves so long as I could see. Knowest thou this country? I, madam. Well, I was bred and born not three hours from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke in nature as a name. What's his name? Orsino. Orsino? I have heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And so is now, or was so but very late a month ago. I went from hence, and twas fresh and murmured that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What's she? A virtuous maid, the daughter of a count that died some twelve months since, leaving her in protection of his son, her brother, who also shortly died. For who's your love, they say, she hath observed the sight of men. There is a fair behavior in thee, Captain. I prithee, and I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am, and be my aid, for such disguise shall form the shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this duke, what else may hap to time I will commit. Only shape thou silence to my wit. Lead me on. Music be the food of love, play on. Give me excess of it, that surfeiting the appetite may sleep and don't die. That strain again, it had a dying fall. Oh, it came over my ears like the sweet sound of the breeze upon a bed of Dealing and giving odor. Enough, no more. It is not so sweet as it was before. Oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou that, notwithstanding thy capacity, receiveth as a sea, not enters there of what validity and pitch soever, but falls into abatement and low price even in a minute. So full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical. Oh, when mine eyes did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart, and my desires like fell and cruel hounds ever since pursued. How now, what news for mine? So please, my lord, I may not be admitted, but like a cloister, she will veiled walk, and water once a day her chamber round with eye offending brine. All to the season the brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. O oh, she that hath a heart of that fine frame, to pay this debt of love but to a brother? How will she love when liver, brain, and heart, those sovereign thrones, are all supplied and filled, her sweet perfections, with one self-same king? Away before me, the sweet beds of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopied with flowers. What a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus. I'm sure it cares an enemy to life. By my troth, Sir Toby. You must come in an earlier night. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exceptions to your ill hours. I let her accept before accepted. 
that quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard of my lady talk of it yesterday, and of that foolish knight that you brought in one night to be her wooer. Who, Sir Andrew Agcheek? I he. Why, he's as tall a man as any in Illyria. What's that to the purpose? He's a very fool and a prodigal. By that she'll say so. He speaks three or four languages, word for word without book, and hath all the good gifts of nature. He hath indeed all, most natural for. Besides that, he's a fool and a great quarreler. By this hand, they are scoundrels and substractors that say so of him. Who are they? They add, moreover, that he's drunk nightly in your company. With drinking healths to my niece. I'll drink to her as long as there's passage in my throat and drink in Illyria. Mm. Here comes Sir Andrew Agface. Sir Toby Belt! How now, Sir Toby uh, Belt? Sweet Sir Andrew. Bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. What's that? My niece's chambermaid. Good mistress, a cost! I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good mistress, Mary, a cost. Uh, uh, I you mistake, knight. Accost is front her, board her, woo her, assail her. By my truth, how do you take her in such company? Is that the meaning of a cost? Farewell, you gentlemen. Oh, knight, when did I see thee so put down? I ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? Do or not do? I have but follow the art. Your niece will none of me, and if she be, it's for the one shall none of me. The count himself here hard by woos her. Uh, she'll she'll none of the count. <laughs> she'll not match above her degree in neither in estate, years, nor wit. I've heard her swear it. Tut, there's there's life in it, man. Uh, I'll stay a month longer. Shall we set out some revels? What shall we do else? <laughs> when I'm close to you, the stars be Even without you, my arms fold about you. You know, darling, why so I love you? Am I in love with the night mysterious? The night when you first were there In love with my joy and weariness And I knew that you could care So taunts me and hurts me Deceive me, desert me If the Duke continued his favor towards you, Cesaro, you are like to be much advanced. He hath known you but three days, and already you're no stranger. Who saw Cesario, ho? On your attendance, my lord, here. Stand you a while, aloof. Cesario, thou knowest no less but all. I have unclasped to thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto her, 
Be not denied access. Stand at her doors and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord. If she be so abandoned that in her sorrow as it spoke, she never will admit me. Be clamorous and leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. Say I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Oh, then. Unfold the passion of my love. Surprise her with discourse of my dear faith. Shall become thee well to act my woes. She will tend it better in thy youth than annuncios of more grave aspect. I think not so, my lord. Oh, dear lad, believe it. For they shall yet belie thy happy ears that say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth and rupious. Thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ, shrill and sound, and all is semblative of a woman's part. I know thy consolation is right apt for this affair. Prosper well in this. And thou shalt live as freely as thy lord to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to woo your lady. He had a barful strife. Where I woo, myself would be his wife. Nay, either tell me where thou hast been, or my lady will hang thee for thy absence. Let her hang me. He that is well hanged in this world shall fear no colors. Yet you will be hanged for being so long absent, or to be turned away. Is that not as good as hanging to you? Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. You are resolute, then. Not so neither, but I am resolved on two points. If that one break, the other will hold, or if both break, your Gaskins fall. Apt in good faith, very apt. Now, go thy way. If Sir Toby were leaving drinking, thou wert so witty as a piece of ease flesh and all of Illyria. Peace, you rogue, no more of that. Here comes my lady. Make your excuse wisely, you were best. <sighs> <clears throat> God bless the lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear her? Take away the fool. Go to, you're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexterously, Madonna. Make your proof. Good Madonna, why mournest thou? Good fool for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away the fool, gentlemen. What do you think of this fool, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that has no more brain than a stone. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. Madam, there is at the gate a young gentleman with much desire to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madam. Tis a fair young man, and well attended. Who are my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madmen. Fire on him. <clears throat> Go you, Malvolio. If it be soup from the count, I am sick or not at home. What you will to dismiss it. Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. Ah, thou hast spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool. I, my honor, have drunk. What is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman. A gentleman. What gentleman? This is a gentleman here. Uh, uh, oh, plague of these pickle herring. <clears throat> how now, sot? <laughs> Good, Sir Toby. Cousin, cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Lechery. I defy lechery. There's, there's one at the gate. Hey, Mary, what is he? Uh, no. Let him be the devil, and he will. I care not. <laughs> Give me faith, say I. <laughs> well, it's it's all one. What's a drunken man like, fool? 
like a drowned man, a fool and a madman. One drought above heat makes him a fool. The second mads him, and the third drowns him. He's in the third degree of drink. He's drowned. Go look after him. <clears throat> he is but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. Madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He, come, he takes on him to understand so much, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. What kind of man is he? <laughs> Why, of mankind. What manner of man? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? Of what personage in years is he? Well, not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. One would think his mother's milk were scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewomen. Gentlewoman, my lady calls. Give me my veil. Come throw it over my face. We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. The honorable lady of the house. Which is she? Speak to me. I shall answer for her. Your will. <clears throat> Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. Tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. Whence came you, sir? I can say a little more than I've studied, and that question's out of my heart. Good gentle one, give me modest assurance if you be the lady of the house, so I may on with my speech. Are you a comedian? No, my profound heart. And yet, I swear I am not what I play. Are you the lady of the house? I am. I will on with my speech and your praise, and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important, and I forgive you the praise. It alone concerns your ear. What are you? What would you? What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity, to any other profanation. Give us the place alone, and we will hear this divinity. And now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. Oh, I've read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and let you see the picture. Look ye, sir, such a one I was present. Is it not well done? Excellently done, if God did all. Tis in grain, sir, to endure wind and weather. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive if you lead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give her a diverse schedule of my beauty. It will be inventoried in every particle and utensil label, as item two, lips, and different red, Item two gray eyes with lids to them. Item one neck, one chin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see what you are. You are too proud. But if you are the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. How does he love me? With adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder love with sighs of fire. Your Lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Yet I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, a gracious person, but yet I cannot love him. He might have taken his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? <clears throat> Make me a willow cabin at your gate and call upon my soul within the house. Write its loyal cantons of condemned love, and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Hallow your name to the reverberant hills, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might, you might. What is your parentage? 
Above my fortunes, yet my sit as well. <clears throat> I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more, unless perchance you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Very well. I thank you for your pains. Spin this for me. I am no feed post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and spirit do give thee five whole blazon. Not too fast, soft, soft, even so quickly may one catch the plague. Methinks I feel this use perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep at mine eyes. Well, let it be. What ho, Malvolio? Here, madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left this ring behind him. What I read or not, tell him I'll none of it. I desire him not to flatter with his sword, nor hold him up with hopes I am not for him. If the youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reason for it. Hi, thee, my William. Madam, I will. I do not know what, in fear to find, mine eyes too great a flatterer from my mind. Fate show thy force, ourselves we do not owe, but its decreed must be, and be this so. <laughs> Will you stay no longer, nor will you not that I go with you? By your patience, no. Let me know of whither you are bound. No, Sue, sir. My determinate voyage is mere extravagancy. Not perceiving you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to keep in. Therefore, it charges me in manners the rather to express myself. You must know of me then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian. My father was Sebastian of Mussolini, and whom I know you've heard of. He left behind him myself, a sister, both born within the hour. If the heavens have been pleased, would you have ended? But you, sir, altered that for some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea. Was my sister drowned? Alas, the day! A lady, sir, though it was said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounts a beautiful. She is drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance with more. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is kill him who you, whom you've recovered, desire it not. Fear you well at once. I am bound to court Orsino's court. Farewell. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court. Else I would very shortly see thee there, but come what may, I do adore thee so. That danger will seem sport, and I will go. Were not you even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir. Well, she returns this ring to you. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance she'll have none of him. She took the ring of me, all none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her, and her will is it should be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. What means this lady? I left no ring with her. Fortune forbids my outside hath not charmed her. She made good view of me, indeed so much that methought her eyes had lost her tongue. For she did speak in starts, distractedly. <sighs> she loves me, sure. The cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lord's ring. Why, he sent her none. I am the man. As it be so, as tis. Poor lady, she would better love a dream. 
disguise. I see thou art a wickedness wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy is it for the proper false and woman's waxen hearts to set their forms? Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we. For such as we are made of, such we be. How will this fadge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him. And she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now, alas the day, what threatless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? Oh, time, thou must untangle this, not I. To do hard and not for me to untie. Approach, Sir Andrew. Does not our lives consist of the four elements? Say, so they say, but I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. <laughs> Thou art a scholar, therefore <laughs> let us eat and drink. <laughs> Mariah, I say, a stoop of wine. Here comes the fool. <laughs> How now, my hearts? <laughs> Welcome, ass. Now a song. Uh, come on, there's a sixpence for you. Let's have a song. Would you like to hear a love song or a song of good faith? Uh, a love song, a love song. I, I, I care not for good life. <laughs> <clears throat> what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. I give you my love, but you don't care. So what is right and what is wrong? Give me a sign. Hit me, baby, one more time. Woo! A man flew's voice as I am true knight. A contagious breath. <laughs> Very sweet and contagious, e -faith. But shall we make the welcome dance indeed? Shall we do that? <laughs> and let me, let's do it. I'm a dog at a catch. By Lady Stir, and some dogs will catch well. No certain, let her catch be thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou knave knight. Begin, fool, it begins, hold thy peace. I shall never begin if I hold my peace. Good, pretty faith, come, begin. Ooh, what are you gonna do? With do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? Oh, I am the poet. Hey, hey, and up he rides away. Hey, and up he rides away. Hey, and up he rides away. Oh, I am the poet. What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? What are you gonna do with a drunken sailor? Well, I am the morning day. I see by the day. I see by the day. I see by the day. I am the morning day. Are you mad? Yes, or what are you? Are you mad? 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 Persons, no space in you. Uh, we did keep time, sir, in our catches. Snack up. Sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that if you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Ooh. <sighs> Farewell, dear heart, since I must needs be gone. <laughs> Nay. 
<laughs> Nay, good sir Toby. <laughs> Art any more than a steward? A stoop of wine, Mariah? Ah, <sighs> Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, you would not give means for this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. <clears throat> Go shake your ears. Sweet Sir Toby from a serum of Olio, let me alone with him. If I do not go to him and make my common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. Possess us, possess us, tell us something of him. No. The devil of a Puritan that he is, a time pleaser, an affectionate ass, so crams as he thinks with excellencies that this grounds him the faith that all that look upon him love him and is on that vice on him will my revenge find notable cause to work. <laughs> what wilt thou do? I will drop his way some obscure epistles of love. I can write very much like my lady, your niece. We can hardly make distinction of our hands. <laughs> oh, excellent, I smell a device. I have it in my nose too. He shall think by the letters that thou wilt drop that they are from my niece and that she's in love with him. My purpose indeed is a horse of that color. And your horse will now make him an ass. Ass, I doubt not. <laughs> oh, it will be admirable. Fort Royal, I warrant you. For this night, to bed, and dream on the event. Farewell. Before me, she's a good wench. Mm -hmm. She's a beagle true bred, and one that adores me. What of that? <laughs> I was adored once, too. Let's to bed, knight. Thou hadst need send for more money. If I cannot recover your niece, I'm a foul way out. Come, come, I'll go burn some sack. Tis too late to go to bed now. Come, knight. Come, knight. Give me some music. He is not here, your lordship. Oh, he's not here. So please, your lordship, that should sing it. Who was it? Feste, the jester, my lord, a fool which the Lady Olivia's father took much delight in. He is about the house. Seek him out. Come hither, boy. If ever thou shalt love, and the sweet pangs of it, remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How dost thou like this tune? It gives an echo to the very seat where love is throned. Thou dost speak masterly, my life upon it, young though thou art. Thine eye hath stayed upon some favor that it loves, hath it not, boy? A little, by your favor. What kind of woman is it? Of uh, your complexion. Oh, she is not worthy, then. What years, I face? About your years, my lord. Oh, too old, by heaven. But still the woman take an elder than herself. So wears she to him, so sways she level in her husband's heart. Then let thy love be younger than thyself, or thy affection cannot hold a bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very hour. But mine is all as hungry as the sea. I, but I know. Oh, fellow, come, come. The song we had last night, mark it, Cesario, it is silly sooth, and dallies with the innocence of love like the old age. Are you ready, sir? Aye, prithee, sing. <clears throat> come away, come away, death. In sad cypress, let me be they. Fly away, fly away, breath. I am slain by a fair crew maid. 
my shroud of white stuck on with you will prepare it my part of death no one so true did share it there's for thy pains no pain sir i take pleasure in singing sir oh i'll pay thy pleasure then. truly sir and then pleasure will be paid one time or another now the melancholy god protect thee farewell once more cesario get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty the parts that fortune hath bestowed upon her tell her i hold as giddily as fortune but tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her and attracts my soul but if she cannot love you sir i cannot be so answered sooth but you must say that some lady as perhaps there is hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Livia. You cannot love her, you tell her so. Must she not then be answered? <laughs> there is no woman's sides can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much, they, they lack retention. But mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between the love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What do you know? Too well what love to women may owe. In faith, they are as true as heart as we. My father had a daughter loved a man. As it might be, perhaps, were I a man, I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like a worm in the bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined and thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was this not love indeed? But died thy sister of her love, my boy? I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers too. Yet I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Aye, that's the theme. To her in haste. Give her this jewel. Say my love can give no place. Buy no dinette. By way, Signor Fabian. Nay, hey, I'll come. If I lose a scruple of this sport, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. <laughs> Here comes the little villain. <laughs> Malvolio's coming down the walk. Observe him for the love of mockery. I know, for this letter will make a complicit idiot of him. Close to the name of Jeff's thing. This is about fortune. All is fortune. Mariah once told me she did affect me, and I have heard her tell come thus near that should she fancy it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows with her. What should I think on it? Here's an overweening rogue. Oh, peace. Contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of him. How he jets under his advanced plumes. Why, I could so beat the rogue. Peace, I say. To be Count Malvolio. Ah, rogue. Pistol him, pistol him. Peace, peace. Having been uh, three months married to her, sitting in my state, calling my officers about me, uh, in my branched velvet gown, Mm, having come from a daybed where I have left Olivia sleeping. <laughs> Fire and brimstone. Oh, peace, peace. And then to ask for my kinsman, Toby. Oaths and shackles. Seven of my people with an obedient start to make out for him. I frown the while and perchance wind up my watch or play with some, some rich jewel. Toby approaches, curtsies there to me. Shall this fellow live? I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control, saying, Cousin Toby, 
my fortunes having cast me on your niece. Give me this prerogative of speech. And does not Toby take you a blow of the lips, then what? <laughs> You must amend your drunkenness. Out, scab. Hey, patience. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. Oh, Sir Andrew. I know what I from many call me fool. Uh, what employment have we here? By my stars, this is my lady's hand. These be her very seas. Her use and her tease, and thus she makes her great ease. It is in contempt of question her hand. Her seize, her use, her tease? Why is that? Um, to the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Her very phrases. This wins him, uh, love and all. To whom could this be? Job knows I love, but who? Lips do not move, no man must know. No man must know, the number's altered. If this should be thee, Malvolio. <laughs> Mary, hang thee, Brock. Let's see here. Okay. I may command where I adore, M-O-A-I doth sway my life. A riddle? Excellent wench, say I. <laughs> M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Nay, but first let me see, let me see, let me see. I may command where I adore. Why, <laughs> she may command me. I serve her, she is my lady. What should that alphabetical portion portend? M-O-A-I, M Malvolio, M, why that begins my name. A should follow. But O does, M-O-A-I. You know what, every one of those letters are in my name. Soft, here falls prose. If this fall into thy hand revolve, in my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Hmm. Cast thy humble slough when appear fresh. Be opposite with the kinsmen. Surly with servants. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Aww. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wish to see thee cross guard her. I say, remember, go to, thou art maid, if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still. Every reason excites to this that my lady loves me. She did commend my yellow stockings late, and she did praise my leg being cross gartered. In this, she manifests herself to my love. Oh, I thank my stars, I'm happy. I will be strange, stout in yellow stockings and cross gartered, even with the swiftness of putting on. Oh, wait, here is yet a postscript. Hmm, if thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, still smile. Dear my sweet, I prithee. So if I thank thee, I will smile. I will do everything that thou wilt have me. <laughs> I could marry this wench for this device. So could I too. Here comes a noble gold catcher. <laughs> Does it work upon him? Oh, uh, like aqua vitae with a midwife. <laughs> if you will see, the, if you will then see the sport, the fruit of sport, mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings. Tis a color she abhors, and cross daughter, a fashion she detests. And he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is that it cannot but turn him into notable contempt. If you will see it, if you will see it, follow me. Mm. Now, most excellent devil of wit. I'll make it to it.
save thee, friend. Dost thou live by thy tabber? No, sir, I live by the church. Art thou a churchman? No such matter, sir. I do live by the church, but I do live at my house, and my house doth stand by the church. Art thou not the Lady Olivia's fool? No, indeed, sir. She will not keep no fool till she be married. I am indeed not her fool, but her corrupter of words. I saw thee late at the Count Orsino's. Fullery, sir, does walk about the orb like the sun. It shines everywhere. I'll know more with thee, old. Mm. There's expenses for you. Now, Jove, the next commodity of hair, send thee a beer. By my troth, I'll tell thee. I'm almost sick for one. Though, I would not have it grow on my chin. Is my lady within? <clears throat> my lady is within. Uh, um, <clears throat> I will consider to them whence you come. This fellow is wise enough to play the fool, and to do that well craves a certain kind of wit. Save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. Give you God, monsieur. Et vous serviteur. I hope, sir, you are, and I am yours. Will you enter the house? My niece is desirous to see you, is desirous you should enter if your trade be to her. I am bound to your niece. Most excellent, accomplished lady, heavens rain odors upon you. That youth from their corner rain odors well. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my beauty. Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam, and most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, madam. My servant, sir. You're a servant to the court or scene of youth. And he is yours, and his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him, I think not of him. For his thoughts were they with blanks rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. By your leave, I pray you, I bid you never speak of him again. But would you undertake another suit? I had rather hear from you solicit than music of the spheres. Dear lady. Give me leave, I beseech you. I did send after the last enchantment. I might use it or a ring and chase of you, so that I abused myself, my servant, and I fear me you, to force that on you is shameful cunning, which you knew none of yours. What might you think? Let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree to love. No, for tis a vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. Then why am I thinks tis time to smile again? O world, how apt to pour it or to be proud. The clock abrades me with the waste of time. Be not afraid, good youth. I will not have you. And yet, when we come to harvest, your wife is like a reap of a proper man. There lies your way. Do west. Then westward ho. Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. Stay, I pray that you tell me what you think of me. <sighs> that you think you are not what you are. I am not what I am. By innocence, I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth. And that no woman has, nor never none, shall have mistress of it, save I alone. And so adieu, good madam. Nevermore shall I, my master's tear to you, deplore. Yet come again, for thou perhaps mayst move. The heart truth now warps to like his love. Say, hey, I'll not stay a jot longer. My reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. Mary, I saw your niece do more favor to the count, serving man, than she ever bestowed upon me. I saw it in the orchard. Did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. 
Let's play on the scene now! This was a great argument of love and her torture. Fight! Were you making ass of me? In your sight only to exasperate you to awake your door moose valor. You should then have accosted her and with some excellent gestures dang dummies. Mm. Challenge me the Count's youth to fight with him. Heard him in eleven places, my niece shall take note of it, and assure thyself there is no love broker in the world can more prevail in man's commendation with woman than report of valor. There's no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will, I, will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go, write it. Go about it. This is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. Mm -hmm. I've been dear to him, <laughs> lad, for some 2,000 strong or so. We shall have a rare letter from him. Uh, by all means, stir on the youth to answer. <laughs> I think oxen and wain ropes cannot hail them together. If you will laugh yourself into stitches, follow me. Young go Malvolio is in yellow stockings. And cross garded? Most villainously. <laughs> he does obey every point of the letter that I dropped to betray him. You have not seen such a thing as tis. I know my lady will strike him. If she do, he will smile and take it for great favor. <laughs> Come, bring us, bring us where he is. My kind Antonio, what's to do? Shall we go see the relics of the town? Tomorrow, sir. Best first go see your lodging. I'm not worried it's this long tonight. I pray you let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and the things of fame and do renown in this town. Would you pardon me? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a seat by against the countless galleys, did I some service of such note indeed, that were I came here, it would scarce be answered. Be like you slew a great number of his people? The offense is not such a bloody nature. Albeit the quality of time and quarrel might have well given us a bloody argument, for if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dear. Do not walk too open. It doth not fit me. Hold, sir. Here is my purse. In the south suburbs at the Elephant is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet while you beguile the time and teach your knowledge with the town. Though there you shall have me. Why I your purse? Your store, I think, is not for idle market, sir. I'd be a purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the elephant. I do remember. <laughs> And after him, he said he'll come. How shall I feast him? What bestow him? For youth has brought more than begged or borrowed. I speak too loud. Where's Malvolio? He is sad and civil and suits well for a servant with my fortunes. Where's Malvolio? He is coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. He is sure possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he rave? No, madam, he does nothing but smile. Your ladyship were best to have some guard about you if he come. For sure the man is tainted in the wits. Go call him hither. I am as mad as he, if sad and merry equal be. <laughs> Sweet lady, ho, ho. How now, my bullio? Smiles thou? I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad, lady? <laughs> I could be sad. This does make some obstruction in the blood, this cross gartering. But what of it? If it please the eye of one, it is with me as the very true sonnet is. Please one and please all. Why, how dost, man? What is the matter with thee? Not black in my mind, though yellow in my legs. Wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? To bed? Aye, sweetheart, and I'll come to thee. God comfort thee! Why dost thou smile so and kiss thy hand so oft? How do you, Malvolio? 
At your request, yes, Nightingale's answer does. Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness. Twas well writ. What means thou by that, Mavolio? Uh, some are born great. Huh? Uh, some achieve greatness. What says thou? And some have greatness thrust upon them. Heaven restore thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings? Thy yellow stockings? And wish to see thee cross guarded. Cross guarded? Go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. Am I made? If not, let me see a servant still. Why, this is very midsummer madness. Madam, the young gentleman of Count Racinos is returned. I'll come to him. Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked to. Where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. Oh, oh do you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to look at me. You know what? This concurs directly with the letter. She sent him on purpose so that I may appear stubborn to him, for she incites me to that in the letter. And when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Mm, fellow, not Malvolio, nor after my degree, but fellow, why everything adheres together. Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. What's, no, go, go off. I discard you. Let me enjoy my private. Lo, the hollow fiend speaks within him. <laughs> go to, go to, peace, peace. We must deal gently with him. <laughs> How do you, Malvolio? How is it with you? What man, defy the devil. Consider, he's an enemy to mankind. <gasps> do you know what you say? Pray God he be not bewitched. How now, mistress? No way, but gentleness. Gently, gently, the fiend is rough and will not be roughly used. Why, how dost thou, Chuck? Sir! Get him to say his prayers, good Sir Toby. Get him to pray. My prayers, minx? No, I warrant you. He will not hear of godliness. Go hang yourselves all. You are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. <laughs> Is it possible? This were played upon a stage now. I could condemn it as an improbable fiction. Um, we'll have him in a dark room and bound. <laughs> My niece is already in the belief that he's mad. Here's the challenge. Read it. Ah, uh, give me. Youth, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. I will waylay thee going home, where if it be thy chance to kill me, thou killst me like a rogue and a villain. Still you keep on the windy side of the law. Good. Fare thee well, thy friend and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Agcheek. <laughs> If this letter move him, not his legs cannot. I'll give it to him. You have made very half fit occasion for it. He is now in some comrades with my lady, and will by and by depart. Oh, uh, go, Sir Andrew. Uh, scout me for him at the orchard and away. How will not I deliver this letter? <laughs> for this letter, being so excellently ignorant, will breed no terror in the youth. Oh, here he comes with your niece. Ooh, I will meditate the while upon uh, some horrid message for a challenge. Dear heart, what are you saying? I have said too much into a heart of stone. Here, wear this jewel for me. Tis my picture. Refuse it not. It hath no tongue to vex you. And I beseech you come again tomorrow. 
Or shall you ask me that I'll deny, that honor saved upon asking give thee? Nothing but this, your true love for my master. How with mine honor may I give him, to which I have given to you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. A fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Gentlemen, God save thee. And you, sir. Of what nature the wrongs are you have done him, I know not, but thy, thy interceptor attends thee at the orchard end. He is quick, skillful, and deadly. You mistake, sir, I am sure. No man hath any quarrel with me. Uh, you'll find otherwise, I assure you. I pray you, sir, what is he? He is a very devil in private brawl. Souls and bodies hath he divorced three. I am no fighter. I have heard of some kind of men that put quarrels purposely on other to taste their, their valor. Like this is a man of this wit. Uh, sir, no. His indignation derives itself out of a very competent injury. Therefore, get you on and give him his desire. This is as uncivil as strange. I beseech you, do me this courteous office as to know of the night what my offense to him is. I will do so. Why, man, he's a very devil. Pass on it. I'll not meddle with him. Aye, but he will not now be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. Plague on it, and had I thought he'd been dying, I'd seem damned ere I taunt him. Let him the man slip, and I'll give him my horse. Uh, I'll make the motion. Stand here. There's, there's no remedy, sir. He will fight with you for oath's sake. He protests he will not hurt you. Pray God to send me. A little thing will make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Give ground if you see him furious. Come, um, Sir Andrew, there's no remedy. This gentleman will, for his honor's sake, have one bout with you. But he has promised me, as he is a gentleman and a soldier, he will not hurt you. Come on, to it. Pray God he keep his oath. I do assure you it is against my will. Put up your sword. If this young gentleman has done offense, I take the fault on me. You, sir. Why? What are, what are you? One, sir, that forest love dares yet do more than you've heard him brag to you, he will. <laughs> Nay, if you be an undertaker, I am for you. Good, Sir Toby, hold. Here come the officers. Uh, I'll, I'll be with you or not. Antonio, I arrest you at the suit of Crown Orsina. You do mistake me, sir. No, sir, no shot. I know your favor well. Though you now have no sea cap on your head. This comes with seeking you now, my necessity. It makes me to ask you for my purse. You stand amazed. I must entreat you some of that money. What money, sir? For the fair kindness you have showed me here, I'll, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. I'll make division of my present with you. Uh, hold, there's half my coffer. Will you deny me now? Do not tempt my misery, lest it make me so unsound a man as to upbraid you for those kindness which I have done for you. I know of none, nor know I you by any voice or any feature. Oh, heavens themselves! Come, sir. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched half out of the jaws of death, and to his image did I devotion. What's that to me? Away! But oh, how vile and idle proves this god! Thou hast, Sebastian, done good feature shame. In nature there is no blemish but the mind. None can be called deformed but the unkind. Come, come, sir. Lead me on. Methinks his words do from such passion fly that he believes himself. So do not I. Prove true, imagination. Oh, prove true that I, dear brother, now be ta'en for you. Oh, he named Sebastian. Ah, oh, it prove tempests are kind and salt waves fresh in love. 
very dishonest and paltry boy and leaving his friend here in necessity and denying him. Well, I'll laugh at him again and I'll beat him. Would you make me believe that I am not sent for you? Go to, go to, thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of thee. No, I do not know you, nor, nor I am not sent for you by my lady to bid, you, to bid you come speak with her, nor your name is not Master Cesario. No, nor this is not my nose, neither. Nothing is so is so. I pray thee, vent thy folly somewhere else thou knowest not me. Vent thy folly? He has heard that word from some great man and now applies it to a fool. Vent thy folly. I prithee now and greet thy strangeness. And tell me, what shall I vent to my lady? Shall, shall I tell her that thou art coming? I prithee depart from me. There is money for thee. And if you tarry longer, I should give worse payment. By my troth. Uh, has has an open hand. Now says met you again. There's for you. Why there's for thee, there and there. Are you people mad? Oh, oh, this I will tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats for two pence. Come on, sir, hold. Nay, nay, let him alone. Let go of thy hand. Come, sir, I will not let you go. Come, my young soldier, put up your iron. <laughs> You're well fleshed. Come on. Let go. I, I will be free from thee. What thou is now? If thou tell me any further, thy draw sword. <gasps> what? What? <laughs> Nay, I, I must have an answer to a blood from you. Hold, Toby. In the life I charge thee, hold. Uh, madam. Oh, gracious wretch, out of my sight. Be not a friend, it, dear Cesario. Ruth's may be gone. I pray thee, gentle friend, let thy fair wisdom, let thy passion sway in this uncivil and unjust extent. Against thy peace, go with me to my house, and hear thou there by many fruitless pranks this ruffian hath batched thou, that thou thereby smiles at this. Thou shalt not choose but to go, do not deny. What, what relish is this? How runs to stream, or I am mad or else this is a dream. If it, that's be dreamed, still let me sleep. Nay, come, I prithee, would thou be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh, say so, and so be. <laughs> Nay, I prithee, put on this gown and this beard. Make him believe thou art Sir Topaz, the curate. Do it quickly. Oh, I'll put it on, and I will disassemble myself in it. <laughs> oh, to him, Sir Topaz. <laughs> <clears throat> what ho, oh, I say? Peace in this person. <laughs> The knave counterfeits well, a good knave. <laughs> who, who calls there? Ah, Sir Topaz, the curate. What, who comes to visit Malvolio, the lunatic? Sir Topaz, Sir Topaz, Sir Topaz, good Sir Topaz. Go to my lady. Oh, our type of bullock feed. Ah, oh, how vexest thou this man? Talkest thou nothing of ladies? Sir Topaz never was a man thus wrong. Good Sir Topaz, do not think I am mad. You have laid me here in hideous darkness. Why, mm -hmm. why thou dishonest Satan? Says thou that house is dark. As hell, Sir Topaz. Mm. Madman thou erest. I say there is no darkness but ignorance. I say there was never man thus abused. I am no more mad than you are. Mm. Fare thee well, Rem remain thou still in darkness. <laughs> My most exquisite Sir Topaz. 
thou mightest have done with it without thy beard and gown, he sees thee not. Uh, to him in thine own voice, and bring me word how thou find'st him. I would we were well rid of this knavery, for I am now so far in offence with my niece that I cannot pursue with any safety this sport the upshot. Come by and by to my chamber. Hey Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Fool! My lady is unkind, prithee. Fool! Oh, alas, why is she so? Fool, I say, I say. She loves another. Huh? Huh? Who calls her? Good fool, help me to a candle and pen, ink and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be grateful to thee for it. What? Master Malvolio? <sighs> fool, there was never man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. Oh, then you are mad indeed, if you be no better than... Ah, you be no better in your wits than a fool. They keep me in darkness. Send ministers to me, asses, and do all they can to face me out of my wits. I advise, advise you what you say. The minister is here. What? Malvolio, Malvolio, thy wits the heavens restore. Endeavor yourself to sleep and leave thy vain bibble bell. Sir Topas. Aye. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> I turn words with him, good fellow. Who, I, sir? Not I, sir. God be with you, good Sir Topaz. Ah, ah, no. A merry amen. I will, sir. I will. Fool. 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 No, no, no. Fool. Fool, I say. Uh, help me use some ink, paper, and light, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than the bearing of letter ever did. I will help you to it. But uh, tell me true. Are you not mad indeed, or do Believe you me, I am not. I am true. Mm. Nay, I'll never believe a madman till I see his brains. Ah. I will fetch you some paper and light and ink. Fool, I'll require it in the highest degree. I pray thee be gone. I am gone, sir, and a monster. I will be with you again. In trice, like the old vice, your need to sustain. This is the air, and that is the glorious sign. This pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it, and though tis wonder where it enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. <laughs> Where's Antonio then? I, he, I, yet there he was, and there I found his credit, that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me come service, for though my, su my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error, but no madness yet, off this accident and foolish fortune. So far I see all instance, all discourse that I am ready to distress mine eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust that I am mad or else the lady is mad. Yet there's something in it that's deceivable. Blame not this haste of mine. If you mean well, now go with me and with this holy man in the chantry by. There before him and underneath that consecrated roof, plight me the full assurance of your faith, that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live in peace. He shall conceal it, whilst you are willing, and shall come note. What time, we what time will our celebration keep, according to my birth? What do you say? I will follow this good man and go with you and have sworn the truth whatever will be true. Then lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine that may be fairly act this note of mine. Thank you.
How dost thou, my good fellow? There's gold. If you let your lady know I am here to speak with her and bring her along with you, may awaken my bounty further. <clears throat> Mary, sir, lullaby to, to your bounty till I come again. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. That face of his I do remember well. Yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. This is that Antonio that took the phoenix and did the tiger board when your young nephew tied us off his leg. He, he did me kindness, sir, drew in my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not twas, but distraction. Notable pirate, thou saltwater thief, what foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies, whom thou, in terms so bloody and so dear, hath made thine enemies? Antonio never yet was a thief or pirate, though I confess on base and ground enough for Sino's enemy. Witchcraft drew me hither, that most ungrateful boy there by your side, from the rude season raised in foamy mouth, did I redeem a wreck past hope he was. His life I gave him, and thereto did add my love, without retention or restraint. All his in dedication for his sake did I expose myself, pure for his love, in the danger of this adverse town, true to defend him when he was beset. Where, being apprehended, his false cunning did I mean my own purse, which I recommended to his use not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Yesterday, my lord, and three months before that, we did keep close company. Here comes the countess, now heaven walks on earth. Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam. Gra Gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario, good my lord? My lord would speak, my duty hushes me. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear, as Halloween after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, Lord. What, to perverseness? You uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul the faithfulest offerings hath breathed out. That ever devotion tendered, what shall I do? Even what is pleased, my Lord, that shall become him. Why should I not, had I the heart to do it, kill what I love? I know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor. But this your minion, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear I tender dearly, him will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb I do love despite a raven's heart and a dove. And I, most jocund, apt and willingly, to do you rest a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? After him I love. More than I love these eyes, more than my life, more by all mores than e'er I shall love wife. If I do feign you witnesses above, punish my life for tainting of my love. Amy, he's detested. How am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who Has does do you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Come away. Brother, my lord, Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? A husband, can he that deny? Her husband, sirrah? No, my lord, not I. I welcome, holy father. Father, I charge thee by thy reverence, here to unfold what thou dost know, hath newly passed between this youth and me. I contract a paternal bond of love, confirmed by mutual joinder of your hands, attested by the holy close of lips. Oh, thou dissembling cub, what wilt thou be when time hath sowed a grizzle on thy case? Farewell and take her, but direct thy feet where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do protest. 
Well, do not swear, hold little faith, though thou hast too much to fear. For the love of God, a surgeon, someone presently to Sir Toby. What's the matter? He has broke my head across and given Sir Toby a bloody coxgun, too. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman, one Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario? God's license, here he is. You broke my head across for nothing, and that I did. I set upon a duke by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. You drew your sword upon me without cause, but I bespoke you fair and hurt you not. Ah, oh, here comes Sir Toby. If you have not been in jail, he will tickle you other gates than he did. How now, gentlemen? How is it with you? Yeah, <laughs> that's all one. This hurt me, and there's the end on it. I'll help you, Sir Toby. This will be dressed together. Oh, will you help? <laughs> An ass head, and, and a coxcomb, and a knave, a thin-faced knave, and a, a, a gull. I, I'm sorry, madam. I've hurt your kinsman, but had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less but wit and safety. You throw a strange regard upon me, and and by that I do perceive it hath offended you. Pardon me, sweet Ewan, even for the vows we made each other so late ago. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons. A natural perspective that is and is not. Antonio? Oh, my dear Antonio, how the hours have wrecked and tortured me since I lost thee. So fast, Antonio? Fearest thou that, Antonio? How oh, you may division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is no more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful. Do I stand there? I've never had a brother, nor can there be a deed in my nature, or a fear in everywhere. I had a sister whom the blind ways and surges have devoured. Of charity, what kins are you to me? What countrymen, what name, what parentage? Of Messaline, Sebastian was my father, such as Sebastian was my brother too. So went he to his watery tomb. If spirits can afford, assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. A spirit I am indeed, but am in a dimension grossly clad. Which from the womb I did participate, were you a woman? As the rest goes even, I should, my tears let it fall upon your cheek and say, thrice welcome, drown Viola. My, my father had a mole upon his brow. So, so am I. And died that day when Viola from her birth numbered 13 years. <laughs> that record is lively in my soul. He finished indeed his mortar act that year that made my sister 13 years. If nothing less to make us happy both. But this is my masculine usurped attire. Do not embrace me till each circumstance of time, place, fortune do cohere and jump that that I am Viola. Sebastian! Viola! <sighs> A captain in this town where lie my maiden weeds, by whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble count, all the occurrence of my fortune since hath been between this lord and this lady. So comes the lady. You've been mistook. You were betrothed from by a man and a maid. <laughs> be not amazed. Right noble in his blood. If this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this happy rack. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times thou never shouldst love woman like me. And all those swearings will I overswear, and all those swearings keep as true as soul, as doth the orbid continent, the fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand, and let me see thee and thy woman's weeds. The captain that did bring me here hath my maid's garments. He, upon some action, is now endurance at Malvolio's suit. Touch my volio hither, at la at yet at last, now remember me. They say, poor gentleman, he's much distracted. A most distracting frenzy of my own. And from my remembrance, Clay banishes. How does he, Sarah? Ah, uh, madam, he has written you a letter. 
I didn't read it. By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Think of me as you please, the madly used Malvolio. Did he write this? Aye, madam, he did indeed. This savors not much of distraction. See him delivered, Fabian. Bring him hither. My lord, so please you. These things further thought on. To think me as well as a sister, as a wife. One day shall crown thy lines on it. So please you. Here at my house and at my proper cost. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you. And for your service done him, here is my hand. You shall from this time be your master's mistress. A sister, you are she. Is this the madman? Ay, hey, my lord, the same. How now, Mavolio? Madam, you have done me wrong. Notorious wrong. Have I, Mavolio? No. Lady, you have. Pray you peruse that letter. You must not now deny it is in your hand. And tell me, in the modesty of honor, why you have given me such clear lights of favor. Made me come smiling and cross gartered to you to put on yellow stockings and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people. And acting this in obedient hope, why have you suffered me to be imprisoned and made the most notorious geck and gull that our invention played on? Tell me why. At last, Malvolio, this is not my writing. Though I confess so much like the character, but out of question, tis Mariah's hand. <gasps> And pray thee be content, though shall be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Good madam, hear me speak. Most freely I confess, myself and Toby set this device against Malvolio here, upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against him. Mariah writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance, and recompense whereof he hath married her. How with a sportful malice it was followed, may rather pluck on laughter than revenge. And last, poor fool, how have they baffled thee? Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. I was one, Sir Tar Topaz, sir, but that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad. But do you remember, madam? Why, why laugh you at such a barren rascal? And you smile not? He's bagged, gagged. And thus, the whirligig of time brings in this revengeance. Well, I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you. He hath been most notoriously abused. Pursue him and entreat him to a peace. Cesario, come, for so you shall be while you are a man. But when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. When I, when that I was a little tiny boy with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, a foolish thing was but a toy, but the rain it raineth every day. But when I came to man's estate with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, kids, knaves, and thieves, men shut the gate, for the rain, it raineth every day. But when I came, alas, to I with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, but by swaggering good, I never thrive, for the rain, it raineth every day. But when I came with Unto my beds with hey ho, the wind and the rain, with toss spots still had drunken heads, for the rain it raineth every day. A great while ago, the world begun with hey ho, the wind and the rain, but that's all done, our play is done, and we'll strive to please you. Every day.
my uh, high school acting career and that's it's how I'm ending it. <laughs> it's bookends. I'm sure that's that means something. It does. That's a resume filler, Carl. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> hey, from upstate New York, incredible. Everybody was great. It was a really, really great show. Yeah, we really enjoyed it. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna ask my cat. I'm gonna ask my cast to stay on. Thank you guys for coming. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One more great Thank you. Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> great to see you all. Oh, Carl. Carl. <laughs> Oh, he's moved over here. Yeah. He keeps moving around. I see. Go off. Oh, I see. <laughs> Good job, everybody. No. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's Fiona. <laughs> Okay, amazing guys. That was absolutely incredible. Oh, all right. I would turn on my video, but I was like crap. Oh hey! Albert! You're doing good. You're doing a good job. It was nice. <laughs> uh, I hope everybody is safe. Please stay safe. Social distancing I barely do it anymore. I'm sorry. But keep up, man. It was a good show. Oh, Thank you. thanks. Good job. Thank you. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. You guys were incredible. So incredible. Hey, Nicole. Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh. I know, I know your family members are going to be like, I heard you acting while I was watching you acting. It was like this double, double speak. Especially <laughs> when I, I was yelling to Mariah out of the room, I was yelling at my door and my parents were like right outside. <laughs> so that, oh and I think God. a couple times I heard their video through my door as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a casualty. Oh my gosh. Lydia, you were fabulous. You were fabulous. So great. Beautiful, beautiful. John, amazing work. So beautiful, so physical, so hilarious. Chloe, you were incredible. Thank your you. Your was beautiful. You had a great entry line. I love your acting and acting and acting. Adam, oh my God, amazing. So fabulous. Andrew was made for you. When, when I, oh. Go ahead. When, when, I, when I pretended to fall in the garden, my parents heard the thump all the way across the house and thought I had fallen for real. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Like, Did you break the house? Oh my God. What's the goal? Jemaya, <laughs> you were incredible. I just was in the room with you. I saw everything happen. I, you were like, just so specific, so beautiful. Great job. Beck, you were killing it, man. You look like a rock star. It's, a it's, a, it's nuts. Yeah. 
and just your your work with the text was so spot on so good so good nate oh my god you and your lord of the manor out awesome that was a perfect ending you guys just nailed it just nailed it it was hilarious kevin oh my god oh i miss you so much you, so much energy and love that was beautiful i miss this family so much and after playing Feste, I think I want to go into singing now. Yeah. <laughs> do, it. do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my Just do God. It. Go, go for it. I know. Yeah. Um, so Sebastian, are you ready to step up next year? You're going to be like lead, leading the group next year. You're just going to be great. You were amazing. So I was like, I, I was like having dreams last night about you and Lydia. It was like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that would be crazy to do a, do a duo with you guys. Sadie, fabulous work. I love the hiding. And you were chasing yesterday. That was so yes, brilliant. Yes, that was hilarious. That was brilliant. Ella, oh my God. Fantastic. <laughs> you are great. Sadie, anyway, virtual high five. Sadie's not here, but I'm going to make it happen. That was awesome. Maya, you're just, you're radiant. So gorgeous and just perfect. All right, amazing. And your glass was a huge surprise. That was hilarious. That was fabulous. Perfect job. Carl, oh my God. I can't even, I can't even. Ridiculous. Me neither. You had so much fun. Oh my God. That was like you really just burst in. That was incredible. I that drank was, my whole big cup of water too. Yeah, it was like your wheelhouse. It was fabulous. And Julia, everyone thank Julia. She just keeping everybody in touch. That was amazing. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Julia. Weird Zoom stage manager, first ever at U City. Oh my God. My God. Oh Lord. Okay, so um, I have a question. Um, so um, Nate, no. are you um, are you there? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Room again. It's like you're out of Narnia. Um, uh, are you interested in trying to make your script work online? Oh, um, yeah, we could try that. Yeah. I was expecting that. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what everyone's doing, but it's like probably not much, you know. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Like, yeah. Okay. So let's you and I have a Zoom meeting next week. And uh, we'll talk and then we can put out like, you know, you need to give us like a, a, um, a character, you know, like yeah. character, kind of give them a, um, a list. If any of you guys don't know, Nate wrote this really hilarious play um, and it's, it's it, I think it would work really well on Zoom. So yeah. anyway. We're gonna we'll have, are we just going to have one that's just the dead body? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But um, I'm really interested in having a student director. So, Nate, if you want a director or a designated director, you guys talk about it as a group. Okay. Um, I, I want this to be your project. But um, yeah. I think this would be fabulous. And you've got, so, you've got like 14 characters, right? Uh, yeah, something around there. Yeah. So, let's, let's get people involved. And so let's, one of us has to go. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, sorry, fellas. We can we can make more. You know we can. You can play the dead body. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Lots of dead bodies. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so just put that in your hat for a second. Definitely, yeah. Um, all right. So uh, I hope this was a great experience. I think the last week and a half has been great. Um, it it was. I think it was tough for the first few weeks, but um, God, you guys did such a great job. I'm just bowled over. I have so much hope for next year, whatever that brings. Um, you guys are all so dang talented. So um, anyway, my uh, virtual hugs. I'm hugging all of you to bits. I adore you all so much. Socially distanced hugs. Yes. Big heart hugs, 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 hugs. Um, I'm do it on my hair. Yes. Um, would, 
would Nate and Carl and and and, uh, and Kevin uh, want to say anything to the group? Or? I'm just We're, really glad that. Yeah, I don't know where he went. Okay. I ate him. Yeah. Okay. There he is. And Corey. Hey, I didn't eat him. He was alive. <laughs> Corey, you were wonderful. I loved your little hideout. It was fantastic. And you really delivered that line about man and maid so beautifully. You and you and Beckett were a great team. I gotta say, Corey, with the uh, intense front lighting and the sheet behind you, it kind of looks like you're shooting from inside like uh, a blanket fort or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really like it. That's the best. That's the best. Okay, so Carl, you wanted to say something? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to say that I'm really glad that this, um, this whole thing did still happen, uh, even if it wasn't, uh, you know, exactly what we were expecting when we started producing a Shakespeare play, um, because this is my, uh, my last show, um, and I'm just really glad that it didn't get cut off and canceled altogether because it's it, it would be like you know going down a, a set of stairs and then instead of the last stair being there it's just like a 20 foot drop yeah it's not the way that you want that experience to end um but yeah i'm just really glad that i could um you know, have one last show with all you guys, uh, with some of you guys for the first time. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a fun ride. <laughs> and uh, I'm not gonna stop. And I know you guys aren't gonna stop. It's, uh, it's sort of like, uh like a train going along and then like the 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 car detaches from it from the back and you know they're still both going just at slightly different speeds this time so i'll uh find my own speed and find my own place to go you'll be majoring in analogies yeah, I will be majoring in analogies. Uh, <laughs> An accent. And yeah, if I can get a minor in that, that would be great. <laughs> or even just like extra credit for it. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, so I love all of you guys a lot. And um, I, this will not be the last that you're seeing of me, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Better not be. Yeah. Well, no, we're, gonna, we're gonna have a reunion because we have to have a painting party. Yeah. yeah. Painting party? Yeah, because yeah, the, the seniors the have wall. to paint the wall. And oh yeah. Oh. So I, I was thinking we could do like an improv show and oh, paint the wall. Fun. So we will improv figure it out. Improv shows are the best because you don't need to rehearse for them. Right. Right. <laughs> you can't oh, rehearse yeah. for them because then it's not I improv. Know. No. No. All right, so uh, Nate or Corey or Kevin. <laughs> you okay, Leah? I, I thought I thought Diesel's head was Kevin's hand, and I was very <laughs> confused as to why he was holding his hands just. Like this. I got some very hairy and it hands. Was so. a dog. <laughs> it's a and they're my cool. very hairy hands. They got head a head as well. Don't worry about it. I, he's a good lad. He is. A, he's a good lad when he's not bothering you. Other than that, all yeah. right, Kevin, you're already talking. Go. God dang it! You tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh.
yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. Okay. Yeah, well, I guess I was tricked into this, so I'll talk. Um, these past four years have been wonderful. Being with you. Um, okay, maybe, okay, you, you can go, fine. <laughs> Say goodbye to my hairy hand, he's leaving. All right, so these past few years, as I said before, have been wonderful. I was lost, trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. And being with you guys got me thinking of what I want to do, and I finally found that purpose. I had, we all had our moments, I can say that, so have I, and leaving here is going to be hard, very, very hard for me, because I've grown a very emotional attachment to all of you guys. You guys have been my family for so long, and being with you guys, and having fun, making jokes, and just doing all of these crazy shenanigans have been very, very fun, and I'm going to miss all of that, you know? It's going to be different when I don't have to go to rehearsals every day and staying till like seven, just having fun, you know? It's going to all be different, and it's going to feel like a distant memory to me. And although they're all going to be memories, but I'm not going to forget them. I'm going to remember the times that we all had our crazy shenanigans. I'm definitely not going to forget the time I'm almost fell off the steps on Adam's family during rehearsals. <laughs> Gary, but it was... At least it wasn't during the show. That is true. Oh, boy. I... Man, Adam's family was my first musical when I've gotten a chance to actually sing. And after that, I've gotten out of my shell afterwards. And I'm, I'm not... I'm going to miss you all, really. I am. And I just want to say that we all are going to have our moments again. I just want you all to know that it's okay to have these moments. It just means we're all, we're all human, you know? We all have to go through these things to find out what we are in this life. But don't forget that you guys are a family and you should always look out for each other, you know? If someone's hiding in a corner like a ball of sadness, cheer them up and be that <laughs> giant sun and just radiate that sadness away because it's cold. Very I thought cold. you were just going to no say radiate that sadness. I'm, like, I'm not sure that's... <laughs> no, All right, look, I'm not a science person. <laughs> I wanted to do science. It's not working for me, okay? Bear with me. Anywho, I love you all so much. Thanks, I'm happy Kevin. to be part of this family. I'm happy to have met all of you, and I'm happy to say that when we go, remember all of this, okay? Be, be the family that you guys want it to be. Always stay by each other, support each other, laugh with each other, and never forget the love that we left behind. Because someone else is gonna use that love, someone else is gonna inspire, new generation of theater kids and when that happens we're all going to be very proud that we've gotten so far we've made it here kids so <laughs> here's to that yeah cheers i love cheers. you all so much you're my family we love you too kevin we love you <laughs> where do you want me to go do you want to be last i will go I will go. go? <laughs> yeah, I have to go to the finale and I'm... Wait, what, who wants to go? Me. You? That's <laughs> what we're having. Um, hello, I'm Corey. Nice to meet you, Corey. No, you're Corey. <laughs> Um, I feel like this was like really cool and this is something we'll like, never forget because <laughs> it was Zoom, you know, and it was really cool. I just want to say thanks to Miss Hopkins because she was really fine <laughs> and she was not playing about it. And I just want to say you all were amazing and we really did that. And I love you all. That's it. That's all I got.
We love you. We love you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Corey Lamont Barber, you are wonderful. Um, okay. So I used up all my good material on the musical stuff. Yeah. So uh, no <laughs> I just on the hip here. Um so this is the end. Um, or maybe not if we do push up, but <laughs> Um, yeah, that's yeah. true. All I, everything yeah. I said, just pretend I said that after uh, Bishop. If we do that, yeah, we'll just hold on to that. We'll say yeah. this to the speech. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this is an end. And I always think, like, ending is a misnomer because there's always something after that, whether it be another play like Bishop or just another beginning. And for seniors leaving that's going off to college and starting a new uh family a new something for you guys it's the next year and it'll be full of just as many good memories just as many good people and you'll get to start the story all over again because whenever there a story ends another begins somewhere so yeah I love the story that I was part of. I love each and every one of you. And I wouldn't trade any of those memories for the world. And if this does have to be an end, even if there will be a beginning again, it does this does have to be an end, then I would rather wouldn't rather spend it with anybody else. Yeah. That's really sweet. The perfect cast. Make it up. Yeah. I was going to say, it sounded like you, were, you rehearsed that. Like, I, not. I was afraid. Because <laughs> I didn't know what to say. Okay. <laughs> All right. Eat a dinner. I know. We got to go eat dinner and be with our families. But um, thank, you for, thank you for believing in this. And thank you for um, committing to this and making this a beautiful show and astonishing your friends and family and others. Um, I'm gonna be hearing from this, about this for a long time because this was, this really proved um, how good you all are. Because if you guys hadn't been through um, all of the work you've done on stage, um, it's just paying off here. It's in, it was incredible. Um, and thank you for sticking with it. Thank you for being there at rehearsal. And um, I just, I just wish I could give you a huge hug. I miss you so much. I really, really do. Thank and you, gonna I don't know what's going to happen, but I love you guys. And for all the non-seniors, we're going to make it an incredible year regardless. And we're going to make amazing work. And it's just going to inspire new creativity. So we just got to look at it as an opportunity, you know? As one door closes, another opens, and we're going to make amazing movies, or we're going to make amazing, just amazing things, all right? All right? I love you guys so much. Um, let's plan another party, another reunion, but let's you and I talk, Nate, and then we'll yeah, roll out a new plan if there's going to be one, okay? okay? So go with your families, hug your families, hug them in lieu of all of us. Uh, we love you, and I hope they're just busting with pride, because they should be, okay? All right. I love you guys. Bye. Bye. We'll see you Bye. soon. Bye. Bye, Bye beautiful. Bye.